Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here one more time to, for another prenatal nutrition class. Uh, remember that this class is sponsored by Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies for the Moms for Wellness program. And everything we discuss here is confidential. This is only for us, ladies. And you're encouraged to share your experience and honor the other people that share theirs. Listen without judgment and with love. So the class today is about prenatal nutrition, but particularly eating for two, what it means to eat for two, and what are those ingredients that we should avoid when we're buying packaged goods, and how to smart shop in our supermarket. My name is Chef Dulce Jimenez. I am a wellness chef and a certified instructor health coach uh, for pregnant moms. And many of you already know me. I have been working with Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies for a few years now, and I'm super passionate about this. So please take advantage that we're here together for about 45 minutes to ask me questions and clarify any concerns that you have. This is where these classes are all about. So let's start with what it means to eating for two, right? So when we are pregnant and or not, we need six basic nutrients, all human beings. We need these six basic nutrients in order to survive and have, have energy. And those are carbohydrates, which is a macronutrient, fat, which is also a macronutrient, and protein, which is also a macronutrient. Macronutrients means that those are the nutrients that we need the most, the biggest per per percentage. We need vitamins, we need minerals, and we need water. Na water is a also an essential nutrient. Without water, we cannot survive. You can actually survive without food for 40 days, but you may not survive without water for even three days. You need water. That's why so many times we have some symptoms that nobody discovered what it is, or we don't even know what it is, but it's lack of water, dehydration. And once you already, are, when you start getting thirsty, you're already a little bit dehydrated. So you should always be hydrating yourself. And my recommendation is always carry a bottle of water and just sipping. Sipping all the time. But that's a full class. I have a full class just to talk about water. <laughs> Today is about a little bit more. And it's more because it's so important that when you nourish yourself, you get all the nutrients that your baby and that you need as well to supply to your baby because your body is going to get the nutrients from you. And if you no, don't have those nutrients, then you're going to get depleted. Your body gets depleted and you can, after pregnancy or even during pregnancy that happened to me, I got pretty sick and lost 25 pounds, which on the contrary, you're supposed to be gaining about 20 to 30 pounds normally to, for a healthy pregnancy. So these are the nutrients that are most important for nourishment for your baby, which are calcium, iron, and folic acid. And of course, the essential six nutrients that we already saw already in the previous slide. Also, I put calories here. Because we need about, when you're pregnant, you need about 300 to 500 calories extra. But that is only a small meal. It's not a lot. As long as you're putting the nutrients that you need, you don't need to eat a lot. I remember my aunts and my grandmother saying, oh, now you have to eat for two. You need to eat, you know, <laughs> more and that is a myth you don't need to eat more french fries and double burgers and yeah and 
you know, double amount of sodas because that's not it. You need double amount of calcium. Yes, you need 25 grams more of protein. You need um, about 30 milligrams of um, iron every day. You need double the amount of folic acid. So those are the things you need to get double. Not extra slice of pizza, <laughs> which is a big misconception, right? So, and, and there's a lot of women that says, oh, people are saying that I need, I, need to, I need to gain weight. No, you don't need to gain weight. Just by being pregnant with your baby and the fluid and the placenta and the baby's weight, all that can, can add up to also 30 pounds. So as long as you're nourished, you don't need to gain a lot of weight. Okay, so 300, 300 to 500 calories is not a lot. It could be about three ounces of a trail mix. And the trail mix could be like nuts and seeds and um, uh, raisins or dates. So it's not a lot. Two cups of organic yogurt, six ounces of salmon, and a, herd, a hearty bowl of green salad with olive oil. Each one of these foods could be between 300 and 500 calories. So you see it's not a lot, okay? So in order to get the extra nutrients that you need without loading up on extra fat and calories, you have to make every mouthful count. And to do that well, it is important to know what is good for you and what is not and why, right? So the carbs, let's go through those nutrients that we already saw a little bit, okay? The carbs or the carbohydrates are the main sources of energy. Those are like brown rice and the, the white rice as well, whole wheat, bread, um, sweet potatoes, all vegetables, but some vegetables are mostly water and more other vegetables are more dense and they provide more nutrients. So fats are building blocks for brain and the So fat are necessary, but fats are not necessary in big amounts, small amount. We saw um, last week about all about fat and we saw how little bit you need. The fat, the good fat, which are the monosaturated fat, um, mostly from plants, they also aid your body in absorbing vitamins. So that's why they're also important. Cholesterol is a type of fat. And you have heard that some people have high cholesterol and they're not good for you. But cholesterol, when you're pregnant, they're building block for pregnancy hormones and they help with a growing baby's brain. So your cholesterol naturally might go up when you're pregnant. Calcium is super important. That's why you need double the amount of calcium because it's building your, the, the, the strong teeth and bones for your baby. It allows blood to clot and heart to beat normally and also help muscles and nerves to function properly. So calcium is paramount for your baby's health and for you to keep living in optimal health after you're pregnant because it will get the calcium from you. And if you're not drinking enough calcium or, or taking it in, in your food or in your prenatals, um, you will be depleted. And also calcium is very difficult to absorb by the body. So certain pills, even though you're taking them, the body's not absorbing it. So it's eliminating it through the body's elimination processes, which you know, which is sweat, urine, and obviously number two, <laughs> going to the bathroom. And sometimes your body doesn't take advantage of it. So it's better to also complement or not a supplement with food and also essential fatty acid which is specifically the omega-3 fatty acid 
is super important for the rate for the rapid brain growth and will affect your baby's vision. So we did we talk a little bit about this during the um, the nutrition fundamentals. We this this class is going to just is a, like a refresher from the nutrition fundamentals because we're going to go more over uh, you know, uh, labeling, reading, and grocery shopping, and what choose, what better foods you should be choosing now. So the best carbs for pregnant mothers are the com combo carbs, what I call the carbs that comes with friends. They're naturally combined with fiber and protein, and sometimes fat right? So that's why they come with friends. <laughs> They're not processed or polluted. They provide a steady release of energy without erratic blood sugar swings. They're, uh, they're more filling and they're more appetite satisfying. And they're less likely, you're, you're going to be less likely to eat too much of it because you're going to get full and you're going to get fiber. And it is very important to fill yourself with fiber and good food so you're not overeating because some, some moms can get pretty hungry when pregnant. And um, the combo carbs will release the glucose in your bloodstream slowly. And what comes with fiber will also stay in the intestine longer. When you eat, just to give a little bit of background about your digestion, when you eat your food, goes through the stomach and the enzymes will take some of the vitamins and nutrients and also will, when they stay in the intestine, they also, the intestine will absorb nutrients and water from the food. But if you eat like, if you're drinking sodas, that glucose will go straight to your bloodstream. When you're eating, um, you know, junk food, like a cookie or muffins that has no, nutritional value, then all that will go straight to accumulate in the liver. And uh, it doesn't provide you with any other nutrients. And they're not, they're not fulfilling. That's why we get you eat a cookie now and then you're going to be hungry soon. It's not something that is going to give you really a steady level of energy through the day. And you need energy to sustain your pregnancy. Okay, so these are the best food sources um, for carbohydrates, the beans and fruits and lentils, nuts and nuts and nuts, butter, not nuts. <laughs> uh, peas, rice, wild rice and brown rice, seeds, sweet potatoes, all vegetables, whole grains and yogurt. Okay, so we did touch a little bit about this in nutritional fundamentals. You do need the omega-3, and I'm gonna say it again because this is very important. So if you don't have it in your prenatal, make sure you have DHA in your prenatal or that your doctor prescribe additional one. You can also get it by eating wild salmon, flax oil, and of course, a separate supplement just for um, the omega, okay? These are calcium-rich foods. As I said before, some pills are not absorbable and you need to get magnesium also with your calcium and you can also get that through the food. All these foods will support you. That's why it's so important to have a variety of foods in your diet. When you do meal planning, make sure every week you, you try different ingredients. And when you, you have a plate of food, you have you know a little bit of protein, a little bit of carbs and a whole half of your plate full of fruits and vegetables. So all these foods will give you a certain amount of car, I'm sorry, calcium. Okay, so let's talk about what our body needs, processed food versus real food. So processed food has been chemically processed and made from refined ingredients and artificial substances. They are high in calories and low in nutrients. And when you eat processed foods, remember, you're eating a product. Somebody wants you to buy this product and buy it again and buy it again to make them multimillionaire. You don't see advertising of 
fruits and vegetables, right? So, you know, there's no money there. There's money in those packaged Doritos and those packaged cookies. There's where the money is. So they want to put everything to lure you and to make you keep eating it every day. And, you know, we know now, doctors know, there's a lot of doctors on board, that there are hundreds of studies backed up by science that show us that children who eat healthy are much more likely to be healthy, both, both as children and as adults. And adults who live on junk food are more likely to suffer a chronic illness and inflammatory diseases such as kids who live in junk food, they're more likely to become sick and become victims of diseases. And guys, this is as straightforward as that. And I have seen it. I have seen it in myself. When you go to the welcome class that I have, I, I talk a little bit about my story and I was living on junk food. And at some point I was diagnosed two different chronic diseases. I was 300 pounds. And I am 54 years old now, almost 55, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> and I feel better than when I was in my 20s. And food is 80% responsible for your health. The rest is, you know, exercise, the water, your, your you know, your attitude towards life, the lifestyle, the habits that you follow but food is 80%. So junk food, it's time to say no to junk food right now. It's not what you need, at least for these nine months, right? Just try it out. So Natalie, you said that um, you are a big cheese eater. <laughs> well, I am too. I love cheese, but I have come to you know, accept that one of the worst foods in the world is cheese, unfortunately. Cheese is basically animal fat and salt and sodium. And the only thing that will provide you is cholesterol and clogging your arteries, unfortunately. What I do is I try to eat just a few cheeses that are the best. For example, feta cheese, uh, also cottage cheese, uh, and also hard cheeses like maybe Parmesan, a little bit on top of my, of my um, salad and things like that. And I, I eat cheese very fast. Let me tell you what happened to me a few years ago. I have always been super healthy, you know, since I started learning this, not always, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> this has been 12 years ago. And I went to, to do some studies and I, I do this every year. I thoroughly do um, studies in my body to see how my body is functioning. And I recommend that to everybody. And the doctor told me that, uh, she, that there was something in my liver that she didn't like. And she said, do you drink? And I said, no, I don't. And she said, hmm, it seems like you're drinking wine. And it's like, drinking wine? I was eating cheese and grapes, eating grapes every single night. I was eating a big chunk of cheddar cheese, which I love, with grapes. And that was clogging my liver. So sometimes a lot of a good thing, it could also be a lot. And definitely cheese nut is, is not great, but you know, yeah. <laughs> cheese and strawberries or cheese and, and grapes, right? So yeah, everything in moderation is okay. But when you, we go overboard and eating the same thing every day, then that could be trouble. Okay, so. Let's go through grocery shopping and the ingredients guide. And at the end, we're going to play a little game. Hopefully we have time. Okay, so how do we choose our foods wisely? So choose foods that are high in protein 
in fiber and healthy fats, because all of which are known to help maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Remember that we're here helping you to avoid those two nasty illnesses, diabetes and hypertension, and you can get it easily when you're pregnant and you can stay with it if you don't take care of yourself. That happened to my own daughter, unfortunately. She got um, gestational diabetes in her first pregnancy and it went away. But in her second pregnancy, um, it didn't went away. So unfortunately, she still have um, type two diabetes and it is real guys. You, you really need to be careful with what you consume when you're pregnant. So buy real foods, those that don't need labels and create your own foods at home. Cook at home and make your own snacks. Blend yogurts with your own fruits. Buy plain yogurts with your own and then you mix it. You make your own trail mixes, your, your own granola, your dip. You can make dips with all kinds of fruits and vegetables. You can make chips at home, shakes. Oh my God, I make an amazing shake. You, you know, you, you control the ingredients because when you make things at home, you use real ingredients and you control what you're putting in there. Um, I love a, a juice place that I go, I was, I was going every, every week, at least twice a week. And the shake was so good. It's like, hmm, I'm, I make the same shake, but it's not so good. And then can I have the ingredients? Because of course they make it there, but they don't give you a label. They were putting agave and they were putting five dates. They were loading my shake with sugars. And even though dates are, are a real fruit, fruit dry dates, they're, they're, they're high in, in sugar. And uh, agave is a better sugar, but it still is sugar. So unfortunately, they were loading my shake with sugar and I didn't know that. And then I started telling them that I just want one date in my shake and no, no agave. And uh, so sometimes we don't even know what they're putting. If we go, even if it's a place that supposedly to eat healthy food, sometimes because they don't have to tell you what it is in it, you don't know what you're eating. So that is important to make your stuff at home and focus on foods that are nutrient dense and healthy overall. So choosing the ingredients um, wisely. Enjoy fruits in moderation and avoid the ones that have high levels of fructose. Fructose is the natural sugars in fruits. And that's why many people say, don't, you can't be eating too much fruit. You don't eat, you should not be eating fruits at night. Well, Yes and no, but you should be eating fruits that are less high in, you know, or, or well said better, high level that they don't have high level of fructose and you eat it with fiber. So you can eat them whole, even with their peel. Like if you're eating an apple, wash it well, buy it organic and eat it the whole, the whole apple. And like pears and apricots and cherries and berries, all kinds of berries. Avoid fruit juices because they lack of the fiber and the fructose will go directly to your bloodstream. Uh, buy non-starchy vegetables. This includes spinach, broccoli, green beans, bok choy, broccolini, asparagus, kale, collard greens, mostly all dark leafy greens. The, the color, the most colorful and more dark colors the food has more nutrients because plant foods has a lot of phytonutrients, enzymes, oxygen that we need in our body to survive. We need all that. We just don't need, you know, fat or, 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 or protein or carbs. We need so many other things to have a shiny hair, beautiful skin, you know, nails for your, your organs to function properly and for your, the signals and the messages that your um, hormones need to send to your body and the organs, they all work correctly. Like we discussed in the, in the class last week about nutritional fundamentals. So 
Focus on whole grain foods, such as brown rice, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta. And about brown rice, there is a class that we talk about all about rice. It is in my YouTube channel. And um, I recommend you to eat brown rice sparingly, not a lot, because the brown rice sometimes it, it has high contamination of arsenic. And I talk all about that in that class. So go please and look at it. Also include lots of beans and legumes like lentils, kidney beans, pinto beans, black beans, chickpeas. They are a powerhouse in the kitchen. You can do so many things with beans. You can make dips, you can make desserts, you can make burgers, you can just mix them with your vegetables and they provide you a lot of fiber. They're very fulfilling. Okay, so choose fish over red meats. Um, remember that you should be eating fish in moderation, two to three times a week, but very small amounts and fish that are low in mercury and high in omega-3. There is another class for that. <laughs> You can also see that class in my YouTube channel or come again when the class is, is I repeat it. I did that class last week. I'm going to repeat it soon. Select lean animal proteins such as egg, egg whites, turkey, pork tenderloin, turkey tenderloin, chicken breast with skin removed. Consume with moderation, dairy, yogurt, cottage cheese, and real cheeses in moderation. Always low fat and not for version, non-fat versions and 100% organic. Substitute with plant-based alternatives at least three or four times a week as you start experimenting, okay? So give me one second, please, guys. Okay, so now let's go over label reading. Do you really know what is in the food you eat? Okay, I want you to write in the chat, do you really know what is in the food that you eat? So I'm going to be reading your answers in the chat. Okay, so if you if we are not, or you are not willing to settle for junk living, we certainly shouldn't settle for junk food. And I love this phrase because many people, I'm not saying any of you, but many people that I know, they take good care of their car or their home because they are not settling with a junk car or with a junk, junky home, right? But they treat their body with junk food, which for me is illogic. <laughs> you know, there's no logic to that. And many men are like that with their cars, right? Like you can even loan your wife and not your car. <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> Well, at least my Latin, uh, you know, people say that, right? But, um, and they don't take care of their own bodies. And the body is an amazing vehicle. It's the only body that you have that is going to take you everywhere in life. Okay. And you get to take care of it. And now that you're pregnant, it's more important because you're, you're making decisions for you and for your baby. And not for only now, for the years to come in the future. Okay, so let's go over label reading. So what is in the food that we eat? So all foods that you purchase in packages, they have this kind of label in the bag. So the first thing you need to do is start here, right? How much serving? Why this is so important? Because whatever you're reading is in here, is in the amount of serving. So whatever this is, this label, it has two servings per container, but the serving size is one cup. So you're gonna have five grams of sugars in one cup. Not if you eat the whole container, 
you're gonna have 10 grams of sugar. So that, that's why you always start here. If you have a bag of chips and you see, oh, and you go back, oh, you only have 50 calories. But when you read the serving size is 10 chips, when you eat the whole bag, <laughs> and the whole bag has 20 servings. So you need to multiply this by 20. So it makes sense. Please guys, if you have questions, write it in the chat and I'm gonna answer them. So, because I want you to understand this very well. And this is easy. You start here in the serving and then you ensure that you don't get too much of these things, the ones that are pink. Not too much of sugar, not too much of sodium, not too much of cholesterol, fat and all that. And trans fat should always be in zero grams because if the ingredient list includes a term partially hydrogenated, you may have up to 0 0.5 grams of trans fat in one serving, even though the label says zero trans fat. So the government allows industries and companies to put partially hydrogenated oils, which is the man-made, which is the worst, up to 0.5 grams without telling you. They can put zero here, but they still can put 0.5. So if you see that there's a higher amount of zero grams, then it's gonna be even more. So that is not a realistic number. Okay, and the green ones, you should be getting lots of this, the green ones, always. Lots of dietary fiber. This one is zero, which is not good. It should be between three and four up and proteins. So usually fiber and protein, you look at those things, fiber and protein, they should be higher than three at least. And always have fiber and protein combined. That will be ideal. And sugar should be lower than six grams, which is very difficult to find. I'm gonna be honest with you, very difficult. And then you look at the daily percent value, but these things are, you know, they're telling you here, all this, we're basing all this if you eat 2,000 calories a day. Who knows? I don't, I don't count calories. Who knows how many calories I'm getting? So if you are eating about this amount of calories, you're getting this percent of the daily value. For example, um, this protein is, 5% or less of the amount of protein you need. But this is very confusing. That's why I never look at the daily value because unless you know how many calories you're having, you know, what are you going to do with that number? So let's continue. Okay. So the most important after you look at that, oh, oopsie. After you look at this, you go to ingredients ingredients will tell you the real story and i think i have a better slide in the front let me go over this give me one second i'm going to find that slide i'm going to talk about it instead of here i'm going to talk about it in the other one okay so this is the label i want to show you this label is a little bit more clear Again, you start here in the serving, then you look at the calories per serving, right? If you're managing your calories, then you go and look at the nutrients, what we just discussed, how many fiber, how many protein. This is a great one because it has 15 grams of protein and four grams of fiber and only six grams of sugar. And now they're putting new, new labels are putting you how many added sugars? Why is this important? Because for example, you're eating an, an apple juice. So the apple juice has natural sugars in the forms of fructose that is gonna go straight in your blood system because you're drinking it. But some companies would add more sugars because they're doing a juice that the, the, the apples are not too sweet so they add more sugars because again, it's a product and they want you to go and buy it again. If it's tart and it's not too sweet, you may not like it. 
So that's why it's important that the natural sugars might be six, uh, they put here six grams of sugar. And that includes maybe five grams of added sugar. So you need to get that um, clear. So you buy products that doesn't have added sugars, okay? So when you look at the percentage value, this is also again saying, telling you, if it's 5% less is too low, if it's 20% too high. So that also give you a little bit of information, but not too much unless you're ca counting calories. So, so look for sugars that are six grams or less, fiber, three grams or more, protein, three grams or more, trans fat, zero, low in sodium and low in cholesterol. Okay. So here, when you look at ingredients, I was saying, always look at the ingredients in the, the back of the product. Forget about the things that they put in the front because those are marketing campaign for you to buy the product. This is a very good example. For example, in the front, it says honey, bunches of oats. So you said, wow, honey is good for me. Oats are good for me. This is great here. They're putting that I'm getting all, only 160 grams. They don't even want you to go back. They don't want you to read the labels. That's exactly what it is. Look at the here. The ingredients are listed in order of quantity. The first ingredient is a corn, which is GMO, genetically modified organism. It's not even a real corn. The third ingredient is sugar. Then you have canola and soybean oils. Both are GMOs and they're two different oils. And let's see where is the honey? Where's the honey? Where's the honey? Look, they put malted barley flour, corn syrup, molasses, and then honey. But if you look at the front, I'm thinking that honey and oats should be the first ingredients. Isn't that? Like you will think about that? Oh, wow, honey is an oat. No, oats is the fourth ingredient. And then it has wheat and rice and oh my God. And again, wheat flour. So it has so many things. And you can do this at home. You can just cook a bowl of oats, real oats, put a little bit of honey and put some nuts in it. And you will have real oats with honey and nuts. But this is a product. And that's what I want you to understand. You will not put canola oil and soybean oil and corn syrup in a bowl of oats that you make at home. And that is the key, guys. Okay, so this list are things that you should definitely avoid. High fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils and trans fat, any artificial color with anything with a number, red number 40, green number five, those are cancerous um, additives, artificial flavors, and aspartame. The long list of ingredients, more than 10, be wary of this. Multiple names for sugar, sugar, fructose, sucrose, lactose, bad ingredients that are MSG, hydro hydrogelized vegetable, protein, sodium, caseine, things that you cannot even pronounce, you just don't buy it, unfortunately. I know there are, are Doritos or, or chips and stuff that we like, but there are clean products out there. If you look at them, if you find, if you, if you look to, if you are really thorough looking at the ingredients and looking at the, the back of your products, not the front. Okay, so in summary, look at a short list of ingredients, good words like whole grain, words that you can pronounce, high in protein, high in fiber, low in sugar, low in sodium, low in trans fat, okay? And do not rely on this marketing claims in the front of your products. For example, 
heart healthy. Heart healthy is misleading because when you see the ingredients in the back, you see that it's not good for you. You have here, um, you know, supposedly some spices and natural flavors, but natural flavors could be anything, absolutely whatever they want. Sugar, cornstarch, gelatin, torula yeast, maltodextrin, dried corn, syrup. Why do you want all these things in your dry roasted peanut? Like when you study these things, you realize that we are being punk, right? <laughs> we are being um, lied to. How can you say that this is heart healthy and putting all these things in the product? Natural means nothing. The manufacturer work with a natural product at any point of the production process. And it's not third-party verification. So when they put natural, it could be anything. Light has either less calorie or fat than the original product, usually watered down with added sugar. Zero trans fat means less than 5%. So remember I mentioned that. Organic ingredients with no verification or accountability required, then it might not be organic. Maybe one of the ingredients or a portion of an ingredient might be organic, but if it doesn't have a label. Multigrain means that the product contains more than one type of grain, usually refined or enriched, enriched grains. Um, you wanted to say whole grain, but multigrain, nothing. Those are marketing gimmicks again. Heart healthy, healthy, high protein with no verification in the back. There's nobody make them a requirement to verify if this is true. Like, how can you put heart healthy if you're putting all these things with, we all know, the people that knows, know that this is not good for you. But nobody is legislating this or controlling this or, you know, inspecting these products, okay? And I'm sorry, I get a little bit mad when I give this class. <laughs> okay, so... This you're going to get in the handout. So you don't have to, I don't want to go over, but I already said some of these things, you know, cotton seed oils and all these names of artificial stuff and, you know, the colors and the numbers. So you can take a photo of this, but you also get a handout at the end of the day. So here are all other names and one product. They have put so many names so you get all confused. All these are the same thing. Okay. Okay, let's go a little bit of, you know, grocery shopping. When you're buying for um, organic, you get, if you're paying for organic, it's a little bit more expensive, guys, and I understand that. Um, you better get the ones that has the organic certified and non-GMO project verified because these are labels that are, they have to pay more money for to have those labels. And that means that they are doing the right thing. You know, um, they should have this seal if they're doing the right thing. And, you know, try to get things with avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil, and that has no GMO oils or inflammatory oils like canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, because these are genetically modified products now. Before, when my grandmother was alive, you know, 50 years ago, corn oil was fine. It was real corn. And, but all oils, if you, if you look at it realistically, all oils are refined and processed to make it oil. So you better end up eating your avocado, your salmon, that will provide you with the fats that you need and they're good for you. We discussed that in the class last week and you can see the recording in YouTube channel. Okay, so these are also understanding your labels, you know, 
every time that you buy in for organic, make sure that you get the seal. Okay, and here's a little bit of difference what the, what the labels means, but I'm not gonna go through this because this is a lot. So you get in this and you can look at it. Okay, so let me give you this one. Organic versus natural. So when you have, when the product has an organic USDA seal, all these things are not allowed. You know, antibiotics, toxic pesticides, but natural, all these things are allowed. So there's a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a piece of information that, you know, I was sad when I read it, but organic foods still have some pesticides, but they might be less toxic and they have better, they're supposed to have better <laughs> pesticides. But unfortunately, they still have pesticides because they need to control pests for us to be able to eat the fruits and the, and the, and the products. So you, I'll send you, and I will send you again today, a list of the Dirty Dawson and the Clean 15, which are the cleanest products that you can buy without being organic and the dirtiest products that you, dirty means with the high amount of pesticide, the dirtiest that you should buy organic and uh, or peel them and buy them um, and wash them correctly. So when you also buy local fruits and vegetables, you decrease the amount of pesticides because when you, we import products, we you know, spray them again when they're in the port and uh, domestically, domestically grown has less pesticide. Also make sure, this is very important for you ladies that you're pregnant, make sure you wash your fruits and vegetables thoroughly with vinegar, water a lemon, scrub the skin with salt and lemons and, and baking soda, rinse it very well, because also raw fruits and raw uh, vegetables can have bacteria and you need to avoid that. This is the, the list that I'm, I was talking about and you can find it yourself with this link. Let me see if I can, uh, I can't copy the link, but you're going to get this and um, this will this website also talk about other stuff there that are good to know if you're if you're into this but also I don't want you to get you know crazy this is also not the time to go crazy and stress about these things you do your best you do your best to eat the cleanest and to eat and to cook at home the most that you can, but not obsessing neither, because this is something that also we talk about. It's very important to keep the calm, keep the cool when you're pregnant. <laughs> okay, you guys are very quiet. Any questions, any comments in the link, in the chat, please write it down. I wanna hear you if you're still here, if you're listening. So, what it means, what is a GMO and what it means non-GMO? So um, non-GMO means that the food is made without genetically modified organism, like meat, poultry, dairy, and eggs. The animals were not fed with GMO crops and it must have a non-GMO verified or USDA organic seal to be a third party verified. So, GMOs are genetically modified organisms that they're putting in the foods and the vegetables and in products to make them more, um, per less perishable. <laughs> like they will last longer in your pantry. They will probably, probably look um, more colorful or, um, you know, but bottom line is that GMOs are more profitable products. That's the bottom line. And they might be harm for you. Okay, so we talk about shopping the perimeter of the store. Well, what does it mean, you know, 
supermarket place the best food for you in the perimeter area. Around the supermarket, you have your produce, your meat, your yogurts, your eggs, your milks, and your fruits and your vegetables. So when you buy groceries, you should go to the perimeter first around the middle aisles, and then you get all your fresh produce and you go with a list. Always go with a list. Always eat a snack or a meal before you go. You should not go hungry to the grocery shopping. You should focus on fresh, real foods, whole grains, and avoid processed foods as much as you can. And, um, you know, we talk a little bit about um, in other classes more, more deeply in these things, but I'm going to send you this as a, as a handout so you see the difference between grass-fed beef and why it does matter and what it means, you know, how they treat the animals that we eat. And even though you, don't, you may not want to be vegetarian, but at least you can choose better. And I am not vegetarian myself, um, but I, I really eliminate as much as I can animal products on my diet and always buy them organic and grass fed. But this is a choice. I'm giving you a choice based on your budget, based on your condition, your life, you decide maybe you don't buy everything organic, but you just buy what a few things that are more important for you, like the eggs or the fruits that you're going to eat uh, with the peel. So you make your own decisions. Okay. And these are good proteins um, and plant proteins that will support you in getting the nutrients that you need while you're pregnant. Okay, and here you have like percentage of how much grams, how much proteins they have. But again, this is a lot for one class and I'm showing it to you just so you know that you will have this information. Okay, so and we don't have a lot of time to do the, the, the game too long, but I'm going to show you two products. So this is all these things. This is an ingredient of a product that you, we use a lot. High fructose corn syrup and a bunch of things that we don't even know how to pronounce it and what they are. This is the froster flakes that we give to our kids. Supposed to be great, but when you look at the label, it's not great. Same thing as this one. Wonder Bread has nothing to wonder. This is a bad product for you. Same as this one, Sunny D, doesn't even have orange. Look at this. This is a Sunny D label. Don't even have orange juice or, or oranges. So this is mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is supposed to be three ingredients. Pasta, real cheese, maybe butter and milk. And you can do it at home in five minutes. But this one's so many bad things that you don't need in your body. Yep. Yes, I hear, I read your comment, Natalie. So crazy how the government does this. What happened is money talks. Money talks, ladies. And you need to protect your body and your family and your children. This is junk food. This is a pop star. Look at the ingredients. Look, there's nothing good in here. Cotton seed oil. Those are scraps. Those are things that are has no use. They cannot sell it alone. They put it in your products. The stuff that we're going to give to the kids. Seven vitamins and minerals. Like, you're kidding me? Those are, what are the vitamins and minerals? And those are added, artificially ones that they're added. But I know after I tell you all these things, I want you to keep calm. <laughs> I know, I'm Tony Crab. <laughs> I know this class is a little bit intense. I know, uh, I can assure you. 
that uh, this class is intense, I know. And, um, but again, I want you to be informed and you make your own decisions. It's not about going to this, to the, um, you know, to your pantry and throw everything away, but you can eat it in moderation and you can start making better choices the next time you go grocery shopping. Start with something really small today, as I always advise you, you know, yes, it is good to be in the know, of course, Tameka, uh, go to your pantry and start looking at those things that we talked today, maybe put them away on the side. I said like, well, I may have a little bit of this or decide if you don't want it anymore. That's up to you. Okay. You have the power and we vote with our purses, with our wallet. I remember many years ago, there was no organic stuff. There were no of this controls. At least now we have controls and we have some labels and some certifications. But um, we have come a long way. When you go to even Walmart, you find organic stuff there. And before it was not available, there were no restaurants for vegetarians. And now we do have all those options. So when you buy a product, remember you're voting for that product to be available for everybody to consume it if it's a better product. And also remember that products are products is a company trying to gain earnings and, and, you know, and profit. Again, as I said before, there's no announcement, there's no advertising for apples and tomatoes and lettuce. You never see that. So when you buy those products that, that are processed, you're buying a product, you're not buying a food. So know that. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for being open to receive this information, to making this choice for you and your baby. I, I appreciate, appreciate you, I recognize you. See you again um, next week or tonight. We have a 7.30 class, that one is about natural remedies. It's not as intense as this one, I promise you. See you guys next time.